Previously on the Adventure Zone. Lucas, our scientific advisor, who has helped us uh, build oh, build this base. Oh, the guy who was an asshole to the void fish. Oh, so you have met him. He's gone too far. He He's found a grand relic and has apparently been experimenting with it behind our backs. It's the Philosopher's Stone. The Harry Potter book? Listen, I, I, it's not me who's doing this, okay? Something has taken over the Philosopher's Stone and it used it to turn the exterior of, of my lab into into crystal specifically solid pink tourmaline and uh whatever is channeling that relic is still somehow using it meaning everything that the gym touches is also going to get coated in gemstones if his lab touches the ground whole planet crystal it's time it's time for the regulators to roll out we're sending you in to detain and extract Lucas for his abuse of confidential information. Standard protocol applies. These suits allow you to cancel out a particular school of magic. Any transmutation magic that tries to affect you or any of the belongings you brought are going to be impervious. This is Carrie Fang Battle. She's a, she's a rogue, and she's damn good. My name is Boyland. <laughs> Excuse me? Does anyone have Anthony Michael Hall's phone number? Because we're about to encounter some weird science. It's the Adventure Zone. So the three of you are currently sitting in a gondola, which is a fancy word for a little boat, um, on sort of, a makeshift, sort of a <laughs> makeshift uh, dock in the Bureau of Balance hangar. Uh, sitting just uh, across from you in another gondola is the regulator crew. You got Casey Fang Battle, you got Killian, and you got Boyland, who um, clarified over Twitter that the name is pronounced Boyland. But I received explicit permission to go ahead and call this character Boyland. And so canonically, that's exactly what it is from now on. <laughs> Fair enough. Good. Um, and the Bureau of Balance base has moved through the night sky uh, to the point where it is uh, about 50 or 60 feet up um, and uh, about 30 feet sort of away from the uh laboratory of lucas miller do you mean laboratory uh whatever you you want to call it well it's america um, so we're gonna say laboratory okay well it's um it's not like america in the game so i think i can call it whatever the fuck i want you're in my world now all right um <laughs> we're in the so laboratory you, you're getting your first hey, what look level at this. are we now eight uh eight okay I can't see why that's like important to Homeboy, the situation. Homeboy didn't save his his uh, character sheet, so he's just trying oh to try great. To stuff. Well, I gave him that extra dry erase board, so that'll help. Is that the dry okay. erase board available for sale at, sale at maxfunstore dot com? Well, if you yeah, it's made by Topatico. Did you know that or Topatico? I don't listen. That's not in fiction, but it's a wonderful product. I have two of them. I'm giving one to Taco. Okay. Well, it's. I know what those look like, just like when you get them from the store, and they don't have Taka's vital stats on them. So I guess you're just going to be making a lot of this shit up. Boy, I need to save your guys' character sheets for you. Because Not you're mine. Chilling. I've Mine's got mine. Great. I do my own work. Dad, yours okay, is well, literally on the most like ephemeral way it could be <laughs> possibly. Please do not act like you are king shit because I, that could be erased with like a stiff breeze. No, it's no, this is great. D are you criticizing the product, Justin? No, it's a great product. All right. So you're getting your first look at the lab now. Um and it's kind of similar in uh, uh scale to the Bureau of Balance lab. It was kind of the prototype for for or the the Bureau of Balance headquarters. It was kind of the prototype for the uh, the base you are currently stationed at. Um, only it is, uh, as Lucas suggested, covered in pink crystal. Um, and there's kind of a gnar gnarly winter storm happening outside. And so there are these... Griffin, like, I'm sorry. Gnarly uh, is in awesome or gnarly is in bad? As in like, well, if you like the winter weather, if you, if you were well, hoping for a Well, you know, you could say like, they were gnarly waves, dude. 
Yeah, okay, so if you were, like, snow surfing, they would be gnarly waves. Got it. Um, it there's a lot of snow accumulating, and uh, it's actually caused some, like, weird, like, uh, uh, like spiky buildup all around the exterior Oh, I hate of, spiky buildup. Yeah, you're going to need some uh, grime spray <laughs> or something for that. It's, uh, but, but otherwise, it, it looks kind of like the Bureau of uh, Balance headquarters, except it's all sort of uh, contained in a a single gigantic dome um there's no like outdoor quad area um there's no you know lush field of grass uh it's all just one sort of enclosed so like we got the ls model and he just got like the standard off you know like off the uh the lot exactly no seat warmers Mm -hmm. the bureau balance headquarters benefited from being the second iteration um and uh the the uh director walks up to the the six of you in your two gondolas and she says uh now we've had to um get kind of creative with your approach uh we we can't have you connected in any way because if say for instance if you rappel down if the rope touches the crystal it could travel up here Mm -hmm. and we could lose the base um, so we've cast a, a levitation charm on both of these gondolas, and we're kind of going to need to just sort of hurl you down there. Nice. Nice. Hurl? We're just going to, yeah, we're going to like, um, uh, well, I'm not going to do it. Avi's going to do it, but we're just going to kind of push you off mm-hmm. and angle you and then just kind of do like a, like we're, th- like we're throwing a lawn dart. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I would be lying if I said this was the safest thing. I'm on board like, with it. Ever co- okay. Has OSHA yeah. cleared this? Absolutely not. Mm. But we've only got we've only got about 36 minutes. OSHA, left, so. more like oh shit. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. And with that, Avi, if you do the honors, uh, and uh, Avi uh, goes behind the the regulators gondola and grabs onto the back of it and kind of just gives it like a running push off the edge and he forgets of to let go oh no doc oh no bye obvious dead no he's not he's not dead uh he pushes the the other gondola off and you watch it very slowly uh very diagonally uh start moving through this uh winter storm uh and then avi comes up and grabs the back of your gondola and says you you guys ready to go feel the rhythm feel the rhyme get on up it's fantasy bobsled time i don't know why i added fantasy to that <laughs> anyway bye to the extreme as you holler that into the abyss uh you are pushed off of the uh pushed off of the the bureau of balance uh uh hanger and it's a bit terrifying because now you're kind of free falling uh kind of sinking slowly kind of floating uh diagonally directly towards the uh the laboratory uh and your your move your target is this hole uh towards the top of the uh the base the uh, skylight in the conservatory that Lucas uh mentioned in last week's episode that you probably forgot about uh and uh and you're kind of sinking towards this you see Carrie Fang battle like standing up in the in the her gondola just kind of like Hooting and hollering, having having a good old time. Mm-hmm. Um, but this it's a pretty upsetting experience, this sinking. Magnus is actually on board. And and this this descent lasts for uh for about a good thirty seconds or so. You're getting pretty close to the base. Um but suddenly a, a, a squall from this winter storm uh presses up against your boats and your boat starts a rocking and a rowing in the uh in the sky. Um, and, and so does the, the regulators boat. You actually see them get a little bit more altitude. Like the storm is like picking them up, uh, a little bit and sort of throwing off Avi's trajectory. Um, and as you approach the base, they've actually gained a lot of altitude and you watch their gondola just kind of sail over this, uh, this, this (laughs) craggy sort of, uh, uh, crystalline, mountain range that has sort of built up as the snow collects uh on top of the base uh and and you watch them sort of disappear out of sight uh while your own boat uh uh, gets gets rocked around a little bit but the trajectory doesn't get off too much and uh you guys skid to a halt on top of the uh on top of this lab's dome uh kind of precariously teetering over the edge of this hole into the conservatory below Wow, what a ride. Yeah, that was thrilling. I feel bad for the other guys. As soon as your boat touches down, it turns to crystal. 
Oh, Not man. as soon as it does. There's a kind of a slow transformation process, but it, it turns to crystal. And now, like, sort of how you were precariously positioned, it's actually, uh, it's actually getting a little, a little teeter-tottery. I just named that boat. Okay, so we, we hop in the hole? No? Wait. No. I say we move towards the back of the boat very carefully. Well, Griffin, when it crystallizes, does it, like, attack? No, it's not fused. It's not fused. No, it's uh. It is. It's just on there, and it's it's now covered in in crystal. Yeah, I'm I'm with Merle on this one then. Okay. Uh, yeah, you scoot very carefully to the back of the boat. Um, is there a check I can make you do? Well, yeah, I think I need to. What would this fall under if you're carefully scooting? Is there a scoot modifier? Athletics Dexterity? for balance, I guess. Right. Dex. Well. Uh, yeah, I'll let you guys do either athletics or uh, dexterity. Okay. Whichever uh, one you athletics. want. Athletics. That is a, an 18 plus 7, 25. That succeeds. All right. Looking for two successes. That's a 19. That'll do plus it. Plus 4. That's 23. So 7. Okay. It's the, well, the other two got you covered. Uh, they they very uh, dexterously back up to the back of the boat, and uh, it comes down with a thud uh, on the top of this solid base, and uh, you are not in danger of, of falling in this hole. Nice. Great. We solved the hole puzzle. That was not a puzzle. Oh, okay. It was, because we could have fallen in, but we didn't. Ten experience points. Ten, okay, Eleven you, for me, thank you. <laughs> Wait, you fucked up. Why do you get more? What? Because he needs them more. Because it's a handicap. I'm handicapping. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you can see down in this hole now. It's a it's about a thirty foot drop uh, down into the conservatory. It's a pretty cavernous room, um, and uh, it it is completely you 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 can't see much from where you're at, but you can tell that uh, this this uh, this this conservatory that was full of all these towering uh, trees is has been completely crystallized. Can we rapple down the wall? I think repel is like how a human being would pronounce nah, that word. But... I think it's rapple. I think the accent's on the first but syllable. I think, I think the problem is if the rope touches anything, it's going to turn to crystal, right? Can we uh, robble robble down the wall like uh, the hamburger <laughs> does? Could, could is... we use a grappelling hook? We could use a grappelling hook. All of the belongings that you have with you have been treated uh, with the, the same stuff that went into your null suits. Um which I don't think I did a great job of explaining last week. It's basically like a spacesuit. I wanted you guys to be wearing spacesuits. Yeah. So you're wearing. No, you're wearing I got spacesuits. it. I totally okay. the visual. Cool. Uh, so yeah, if you if you had a rope with you, you could you could try and climb down it or you know do whatever. Hmm. Okay, we, we do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, there's uh, there's yeah there's a few like rocky or crystally uh, outcroppings that you could tie a rope to. Um, and, uh, you all three are going to need to make some, some athletics checks. It'll be pretty bad if you fall down this. This is a 40 foot drop. That's a ton of damage, but 13 Again plus with the 7, athletic? 20. Okay. Uh, nine plus four, 13. Athletics check. That's going to not be great for me. Let me do a quick, <laughs> quick maybe acrobatics. Uh, no, it wouldn't really be acrobatics unless you're doing, like, f- some fucking Cirque du Soleil shit, like, five, suspending yourself by a single five, ankle. Five. Juice, do you have a spell you could use instead of using the rope? Don't you have a feather duster or something? Uh, feather fall. I sold that. <laughs> cool, cool, No, you cool. have a, in your, in your umbrella. That was one of the effects you had. That's is, why is I that. sold it. Yes. Yes, feather fall. Excellent. That's a great uh, idea, Travis. I- Thank you. Or you're should welcome. I say... Whatever, tr- fantasy, Travis. Magnus, like a, uh, a a veteran gym teacher, goes down a rope, uh, just like hand over hand, upside down, like totally balling. Oh, he's the greatest. Um, and reaches reaches the uh, crystalline forest floor below. And uh, Magnus, you see Taco and Merle just try and do this, but they like get two hands down and just like both fall, and you shout feather fall. Yeah, it, your your umbrella has group feather fall, which you got from some, one of the. Staves One of the bosses. Your umbrella eight. Yeah, it was either cut man um, or fall man or. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's it it safely enshrouds you and and Merle in a silvery light as you slowly descend to the floor below. 
I want it stated that I rolled a 13. I mean, he got five. I shouldn't have needed that much help, should I? Uh, no, actually, you probably wouldn't have fallen, but you would have gotten some bad burns on your hands. Oh, okay. I don't want bad burns. And you, need, you need those hands. So you've made it to the uh, the floor of the conservatory, um, and uh, it's 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 full of these. Uh, it's basically a forest, a uh, artificial forest of these crystalline trees, um, and uh, you, you're you're sort of surrounded. You can see two paths from where you. Uh, landed. You can see a, uh, a a path out to a uh, a pond that has also been crystallized. It's basically just a big uh, pink clearing now. And now, uh, Griffin, are we can... safe to assume that everything has been crystallized just to save you a little time in describing everything? Uh, everything in this room has been crystallized. Got it. Um. So yes, if you want me, I can stop saying that word as mm-hmm. much as I have been. I'm just afraid it will begin to lose meaning. Yeah. Sure. In uh, in the opposite direction, you see a uh, a, a small uh, sort of clearing that almost looks like a garden. Um, has it been crystallized? There, it has actually been crystallized. <laughs> Great. Um, and there are actually Could you some... start describing things by what hasn't been crystallized yet. <laughs> okay. Nothing. Like if there was air in a room, you wouldn't say like, and there's air everywhere, and it's just like all around you, and it's Great above question. you and below you in parts. Like let's just assume crystals are like air. And there's okay. crystals, just like crystals, 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 crystals everywhere. Beautiful, beautiful. And it would paint. tinkle. Beautiful Wouldn't paint. that be cool? If it, like it was just tinkling all around us. Like crystal. How's the tinkle, Griffin? Tell us about your tinkle. Um, put some tinkle actually, in those crinkles. There's some ambient crinkle tinkles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's kind of like you're in like a Mario Ice level. Is there just like a sprinkle of crinkle tinkles? Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, so anyway, there's a frozen garden, crystallized. There's some. Um, there are actually some robots in it. They're holding like various garden tools, a watering can, crystallized some, robots. S- some shears. Yeah, they've all been crystallized. Everything. It's all crystal, baby. Uh. And they're non-functioning, I assume, right? Uh, no, they're actually screaming. No, yeah, they're not functioning. They're, okay. They're. Uh, they are dormant. Should we attack um, them? You think? Should I we kill them? So. They're wrapped in and, air, oh. by which I mean crystals. Ditto. Do we have yeah. any kind of map or understanding of where to go from the conservatory or do they just like drop us off a figure that will just like intuit the way uh Lu- lucas said that you need to move toward the interior of the base the conservatory is sort of on the outside um and you need to move toward the center um because that's where he is in a med bay hold up in a med bay uh uh that is not crystallized um and uh, he needs you to get to him and, and help him out. Could I suggest a perception check to help us figure out where to go? Yes, you may. I suggest a perception check. <laughs> okay. Good call. Two one. There's my good roll. I've been waiting for those good good rolls, and it's when I need to look at a bunch of fucking crystals. <laughs> Just I exactly an what I hope for. What? I rolled an eighteen. We're bringing all those big points. I rolled a three. Dad falls okay. over, and a crystal goes through his eye socket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no, I had to add three for perception check, so it's a six. It, all right, narrowly so it got both eyes. The, yeah. the secrets of the universe are exposed to you. <laughs> um, you know, uh, Taco and Magnus, uh, you make out across this uh, pond, and you know that pond is made of crystal, right? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, everything's crystal. I'm literally it's appending not- crystal to every word you say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Uh, across that pond, you actually see something that doesn't have the same sort of uh, uh, pink hue that everything else around you has. You actually see a uh, a, a faint circle of white light, um, and you can see some metal inside of that circle that is just metal. It's not, it is not crystallized. Uh, I would like to uh, move closer to that. Okay. Um, as, as you guys move across this pond, um, that crinkle tinkle that you've sort of been hearing the whole time you've been in this room starts to get louder until it's almost like a consistent, like, hum. Um, and pretty soon that hum is forming, like, a melody. It's forming music, and it's coming from, like, it's not like there's a loudspeaker anywhere. It's just, like, coming, it's resonating through the crystal, um, and you can hear it, and... Eventually, on top of that hum, you hear a voice. And the voice sounds weird. It sounds, um, it doesn't sound real. It sounds synthetic, in a way. 
Uh, and that voice sings the following. Come from my home in Santa Cloud, lost to the dark high rift Now, Griffin, is this something I need to write down? Is it like a direct clue or is it just like, okay. Uh, I mean, it's not going to be like the the password to a safe later on, word for word, that you have to like okay, sing great. it back to it. Um, it's it's what I like to call foreshadowing and maybe character development. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, that's what I was looking for. Uh, as, as you shout that, a a rift appears in the air directly in front of you. Just kind of a... It's ah, not very it's big. It's pretty small. Uh, about the size of a tennis ball. Just kind of tears itself in the fabric of, of space. Um, and from it, a small uh, a light pops out. A small little ball of light pops out and drops into the pond that you're standing on. And then shit gets really, really raw very, very quickly. Uh, it feels like there's an earthquake in this room. Uh, and you hear the sound of trees just falling over and shattering as, you, as they hit the ground. Uh, and shards of, of those trees uh, are, are flying at you toward where this light dropped in and and uh, from the pond that you're standing on like a huge chunk of crystal uh comes flying up um and i actually need all of you guys to make a dexterity saving throw to dodge all of these crystal shards as they fly in your direction 18 plus 2 20 16 10 plus 0 okay 10 uh taco and magnus you you uh you dodge them uh, but uh, Merle, you are not as lucky. Um, a a pretty sharp, like almost blade of crystal, comes flying in your direction. That's been sheared off of a uh, sheared off of a tree nearby, uh, and hits you for seven damage uh, and knocks you to the ground. But it doesn't do uh, well, weirdly enough. It doesn't do like slashing damage to you. Your your spacesuit uh, is not cut open um it almost feels like the suit converted it to like blunt damage um whatever this suit is made out of is 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 sort of protected against uh slashes but that's going to leave a nasty bruise isn't yeah it? a seven hp sized bruise um uh, arg and uh all of these crystal shards are flying together and sort of floating in air and self-forming to create a pretty horrifying sight. It's a, uh, it is a creature, and it stands at about fifteen feet tall. It's got four razor sharp claws extending off of these arms that are nearly the length of its body. It's got, uh, it's got these long uh, legs that end in almost in points. It doesn't appear to have traditional feet. Um, it, it seems to be just sort of suspended in the air somehow. It seems to be just sort of suspended in the air somehow. Uh, and its torso is comprised of a, a large single piece of tourmaline that's about as broad and tall as a refrigerator with these nasty looking spurs uh, poking out of it. And uh, its its head is these uh, more of these crystal blades coming together to form like a pyramid like peak. Um, and that light uh, has risen out of the pond you're standing on and is now spread throughout this entire crystal golem, making it appear like his insides are all just white fire. And uh, it's pretty, it looks pretty menacing. I whisper to my shield, did I ever tell you about the time I fought all those crystal monsters? Okay. Uh, go ahead and make a bluff check. Okay. That is a not good enough. Okay. That's one strike. <laughs> what was it? Come on. Hey, shield, he's lying. Uh, uh, <laughs> you, you, while you did that very discreetly, this this giant razor sharp crystal monster is just kind of eyeing the three of you over. He's standing still for the time being. Uh, hail hey. and well met. 
Uh, <laughs> you mean to it? Uh, it turns its head. Yoinks in a way. Tur- My name is Taco, and you look like you're made of salt. Uh, it flies at you, Taco, and puts its head just like inches away from from your own, uh, and gets real, real Don't close. Don't mention alt. Oh, say. Little, little hard hearing, huh? Well, that's okay. Come on in. Uh, we're uh, adventurers. I don't sound like this. I don't know. No, that's pretty. I don't think it's that bad. It's not bad. That was that was that okay, was premium pretty, taco. Pretty close. Yeah. Uh, uh, where's the interior? <laughs> hey, hey, salt. Uh, it backs away from you, Taco. It sort of moves What's back. What's up a now, Geo dude? I believe his name is Morton. Um, Magnus, it turns to you next, and it sort of flies up on you next, and gets real, real, real close, and just kind of eyes you over. Um, and it's glowing, uh, it's going a little bit brighter inside that white light. I eye it right back. Okay. You don't, you don't move. You're steely, steely gazed. Yeah. Do you want to try and intimidate it? Yeah. Now that you mentioned it, I do. That's a nat 20. Okay. Uh, you, you crit and it backs up like a millimeter. So little that maybe your two cohorts didn't notice, but you know. You know, I know. You, you know. You know what the fuck's up. <laughs> uh, and he backs away from you, too. Like he back- King K again got shit on me. Like he backs away from Taco. Um, and then Merle, he moves to you next. And he gets all up in your business. He gets all up in your grill. I start to very subtly and very easily cry. <laughs> Big tears are rolling down my cheeks. Because I'm sure he's going to kill me. <laughs> it's a clever move, Dad. I'll never see that one coming. Uh, I know I should. And then one. with a quivering lip, I cast Meld into Stone. Wait a minute. Why are you doing this? <laughs> and I can yeah, meld know. with him. He hasn't attacked us yet. Well, he this hasn't is a- us. Let's not instigate with the big crystal monster. Well, it doesn't attack him. It doesn't hurt him. You just want to become... Just you just wanna be- I just... You're well, just, maybe I can understand it a little the better. If, and melt with him. It's, if it's, I meld it's, with him, it's maybe I'll know what he's thinking. Stone. <laughs> All right, I won't meld into stone. That white light inside of him, Merle, is now glowing even brighter. Uh, and this, this big crystal golem moves away from the three of you now and surveys all three of you one more time and then holds out one of its long, sharp claws and points it at Merle. And you hear stones in its head rub together uh, to form uh, a, a sound that sounds vaguely like, you. And then we're going to roll initiative. Uh, Did he finish the statement by saying, suck? <laughs> you are a jerk. <laughs> You're great. Um, you... Two is one of my favorite bands. No, their late work doesn't get enough credit, but they've been in something of a renaissance for the past half decade. Bono is still one of the most electrifying frontmen in the business today. I saw their show in Leeds. It was amazing. <laughs> Don't get me started on Slash. And, and the edge. And, who's, why and forget slash. about forget all about Bucket Man. <laughs> <laughs> These are not people in you two. I guess I don't know as much about you two as I thought I did. What do you want? An apology? Did you confuse edge <laughs> the edge with slash? Both again? Are, well, well, you, you slash, slash with, with an edge. edge. Yeah, Both are blades. Yeah. I don't know. And their friend blunts. Uh, wow, that would actually be a way better band. Everybody, it's Griffin McElroy, your dungeon master, your best friend, and your long lost uncle. Lost the lost me in the Adirondacks hiking about two decades back. I ain't seen you in a while, but you growed up real nice. Uh, thanks for listening to the Adventure Zone episode 30, the second part of our Crystal Kingdom arc.
I hope you've enjoyed it. Let's get into the advertisements. I have a call to action for everybody listening to the podcast this week. I hope you're enjoying our Dungeons & Dragons podcast. Here's my call to action. Go listen to another Dungeons & Dragons podcast. I'm not saying you replace our show with theirs. More and more, you supplement it. Because you can't have enough real real play D&D podcasts in your life. The one I want you to go listen to is called Drunks & Dragons. It's Drunks & Dragons. You can find it on iTunes or, assumedly, where... All podcasts are sold. Uh, Drunks and Dragons is a fun, lighthearted, real play D and D podcast with a huge back catalog to listen to. Drunks and Dragons isn't just a podcast; it's a welcoming and inclusive community of gamers that are waiting to become your best friends. Again, not not to replace me as your best friend. Still waiting on that Christmas card, best friend. Um, but to supplement it with more best friends, more dungeons, more dragons, more drunks. We don't record the podcast drunk, so that'll be like a new energy that they bring to the table. Anyway, the show's called Drunks and Dragons. And uh, go go look it up on iTunes and check it out and listen to it. Got a personal message here. If you want to get a personal message or a business message on the Adventure Zone, just go to MaximumFun.org slash Jumbotron. We got spots available for folks who want to give a little shout out on the show. It's easy to sign up for one. You can find all the details, again, at MaximumFun.org slash Jumbotron. Message here is for Marvy. I'm wondering if that's the same Marvy that... I made a character in Adventure Zone, and then my family murdered. Um, but I hope not, because this message is from Marvy, and it's from Alden. And Alden says, Merry Christmas, Marvy. I am so proud of you for following your dreams and going to grad school. I know the transition is hard, but you are so strong and are handling it great. I love you and know you will be the best, Alden. Or you will be the best, Alden. No, 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 there's a comment there. You will be the best, comma, Alden. Sincerely, I'm, I assume Alden. Unless maybe Marvy is going to Alden school and is, is going to take, take you over, gonna take your job. And then you're gonna have to change your name to something else, like Bo or something. Merry Christmas, Marvy, and good luck with the grad school. Got another personal message here. This one's for Nicole, and it's from David. And David says, Nicole, thank you for helping me through a rough time. You've always been there for me, and I'll always be there for you. You're the best not-a-girlfriend a a guy could ask for. Just always remember, Josh loves Donna. That's from David. Some spoilers in there. Some West Wing mid-series run spoilers in there. Um, Will they? Won't they? Who am I to say? I don't don't know who I am to say. But go watch the West Wing, because it's a really, really, really wonderful television show. Anyway, Nicole, David. Congratulations on your arrangement. Not sure exactly what it is. I had to reread the email a few times to sort of understand it. It sounds like there's a lot of, there's a lot of love there. And that's, you know, that's all you need in this crazy mixed up dumb, dumb world of ours. I want to say thanks to everybody who's been tweeting about the show using the, the zone cast hashtag on Twitter. Why did I say on Twitter? Of course, that's where you've been putting your tweets and hashtags and stuff. Uh, it helps us out a lot when you tweet about the show and share it with your friends. We do not uh, advertise or market the show uh, in any way, aside from the promo spots that we run in the other Maximum Fun shows. Speaking of which, go to MaximumFun.org and uh, go listen to all the other wonderful programs that are there. Uh, I've heard rumblings of some new stuff coming down the pipe that I'm very excited about on the Max Fun Network, but there's some really great stuff there right now, too, like, uh, uh, The Flop House and Lady to Lady and Can I Pet Your Dog? Um, we do other shows on the network, like My Brother, My Brother and Me and Sawbones, uh, and, and Bunker Buddies. Uh, so yeah, there's a ton of programming there. It's all free and it's all very good. Anyway, tweet about the show using the, the Zonecast hashtag. You might end up as a character in this arc. I uh, still got a few characters that I need to name, so get those tweets in. Uh, if you want to help us out in other ways, you can uh, review the show on iTunes. Uh, that helps get us bumped up the, the, the charts a bit. Um, but really, the best thing you can do for us is just tell your friends about us. Um, make that your resolution. Moving into 2016, building bridges. Um, we, we want you to, to share the show if you can, um, even with friends that you don't think like D&D. We didn't like D&D until we started playing it. Anyway, that's enough of that. Um, I, I don't really have any other like messages I need to say, except for it's been over a year now since we've been doing this podcast, and the reaction to it has been absolutely wonderful. It's been like the most exciting sort of creative endeavor that I've probably ever been a part of. And um, thank you all so, so much for being so supportive of it uh, and, and, uh, and, and helping it be a success. We really genuinely appreciate it and uh, love doing it and look forward to doing it a whole lot more in, in 2016. So uh, stay tuned. Next episode is going up 
on Jan. This should be easy since it's the 31st, but I'm an idiot, so I want to double check. Yes, January 14th, 2016. Can you believe that shit? January 14th, 2016. We'll see you then. Bye. I'm sorry I'm rolling so well, everyone. I know mm-hmm. I know it always seems sketch. Quite some conspiracy theorists. All right, that was an eight, but I get to roll again and add two to the highest uh, one. Yeah, my final number is 20. 12 plus two, 14. Eight. Uh, first thing in order is Magnus. So I'm we're gonna... fighting now? That's typ- typically what initiative means. Yeah, we're, yeah. We, we're ro- rolling initiative to see. So I was right. See who hugged first. I am going to two-handed slash him with rail splitter. Okay. Let me get all my accoutrement here. Okay. That is 14 plus 7 at 21. Uh, yeah, that does it. And that is 1d10 plus 6. That is a 7 plus 6, 13. And I am going to use one of my new uh, skills called goading strike. When an attack lands... Um, it is the damage plus my thing, so 13 plus 4, uh, 17. So, Ditto, you gotta roll a 17 or better, and on a, f- a wisdom saving throw, and on a fail, the target has disadvantage on attacks, not against me. Okay. Uh, 15. Not gonna do it. Nope. Uh, okay, and how much damage did you deal? I did 13. Okay. You actually did six. Okay, well, good news. I'm going to attack again with my second attack. Okay. Two-handed strike. That's a 16 plus 7, 23. That does it. What? That does it. That hit it. Great. That's a hit. Um, And that does... Three plus... No, yeah, three plus six, so nine damage. Okay, that's four damage. Cool. So this guy is strong, y'all. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, next in the order, you see him uh, is is the crystal golem. You see him like start to like he he wants to attack you because that attack you did to him, but he actually turns towards Merle. And Merle, he's that's going. What I thought he's going to float over in your direction and. Uh, Rake one of his claws at you. Remember, he has disadvantage. It's a natural 20. Oh, manzies. Uh, that is a 15 plus 7, 22 versus your AC. Well, well, that's definitely a hit. Okay. But at least he didn't hit you with a crit. That is true. Uh, he hits you for 19 damage, and again, your suit sort of catches those blades uh, and, and sort of converts it into blunt damage. Nice. Wow. I can't believe my blunt got hurt. Um, yeah, it's a, he, he hits you real, real, real hard. Um, next in the order, who rolled the 14? Uh, I did. Okay, it's you. All right. I am casting one of my new spells, Guardian of Faith. A large spectral guardian appears and hovers for the duration in an unoccupied space of my choice, which will be right next to me. Okay. Uh, And we can see it. It occupies that space and is indistinct, except it holds a gleaming sword and shield. Fuck yeah. Emblazoned with the pipes of Pan. Nice. And what is it? Can you say what this thing looks like? And can it please be Roma Downey? I... I oh I kind of want like a touch yeah. touch by an angel Let's do thing. It. Go, Let's no no no, no yeah, it's, your, it's your game and I want you to do no 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 I was gonna I I was gonna go with hacksaw Jim Duggan but I think Roma Downey would be better. Okay, I just we'll I really want some touch by an angel fan fiction stuff going on in the game. Well, then I say it looks like Della Reese. Fuck yes, Ooh. even better. Slam Della dunk. Reese. Yeah. <clears throat> now any creature that's hostile that moves Della within Reese. ten feet of the guardian, which is standing right next to us. For the first time on a turn, has to make a dexterity saving throw. It takes 20 radiant damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a successful one. Wow. Jeez, okay. And how long does it last? 
until it deals 60 damage total. Wow, damn, Della wow. Reese, holy shit. Della Reese is a badass. Yeah, no kidding. Okay, but this thing can't move. It's sort of like a stationary... It's staying right next, it's right next to us. Okay, yes. cool. That's a neat spell. Yeah. Okay, so you built a little security person it, for yourself. It kind of makes my swinging an axe at a guy look pretty pathetic, doesn't it? No, 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 no. Uh, okay, but that's your turn, right? Because you cast a spell. That's my turn. Uh, next in the order is Taco. So, like, what's this guy vulnerable to? Do we know? Insults. <laughs> oh, the, Global okay. warming. Okay. Um, just time, um, the cur- just the erosion of time. The bite of a jealous lover. Huh? Huh? Well, more like poetic bite, not like an actual bite. That'd be weird. I'll go. I well, will like, actually. You know, like, I, don't worry about it. I, <laughs> yeah, nothing. I forget I said it. I'll conf- I'm on a lot of a lot of cold medicine. I'm going to confirm immunity to biting damage. Don't try and bite this <laughs> fucking thing. Um, I mean, like, kill it. I guess I'm just kind of bored by. Do you have any Sonic spells? I mean, I got Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> on Genesis. I brought the tape. Do you have anything that lets you melt with stone? Um, oh, crap. A lot of people have been talking about that lately, and I don't think it makes any sense. I'm going to cast... Um, you know what? I'm going to ca- I'm gonna try this. I'm going to try uh, uh, Shatter. That sounds good for a crystal thing. Holy shit. Uh, a sudden loud ringing noise painfully intense erupts from a point of my choice within range. Each cra- creature in a 10-foot radius sphere centered on that point. I'm just aiming for, like, its head. Um, the creature takes 3d8 thunder damage on a failed save, or half as much on a successful one. Uh, read the next part. Creature made of inorganic material, such as stone, crystal, or metal, has disadvantage on this saving throw. Yeah, that's why I cast it. Fuck yes! Okay, I had no idea this spell existed when I wrote this whole campaign art. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so here, here's the problem. Um, this, this thing has got to be close to at least Merle. Because he just moved and attacked Merle. Um, so, Merle, you're going to have to be a part of this save as well. How big is the thing? It's a 10-foot radius. No, how big is the creature? Oh, I did say it was 15 feet tall, didn't I? Yeah, so I aimed at its head. Okay, I'll, so I'll give you that. Merle's no way is Merle 5 feet tall. No, absolutely not. Okay, cool. 4 foot 11 and a half tops. Cool. Uh, okay, yeah, so this thing has to save against your spell, spell saving throw, which is... yeah. Uh, eight plus your spell casting modifier, which is either six or seven. You don't know. Seven. Seven. Okay. So I have to beat a fifteen. Yep. Uh, I got a seventeen, but I have fucking disadvantage. Fourteen. All right. Uh, shit. Okay, this thing's about to take a ton of damage. Here it comes. Here it comes. It's gonna be a D eight. That won't deviate. Okay. I'm just trying to give you time. Okay, so wait. Is the diamond? Yeah, it's a D8. Five. Eight. Eight. Wow! 21. 21 points of damage. Okay. Um, not only that, one of its arms just explodes. Sweet. You just sort of reduce it to pink dust. Um, Quick question. Was it his favorite arm? It was. Let's just, I'll just say this. I don't want to get blue. If you're a child and you're listening to the show legally, you have to tell me or it's entrapment. This is baiting an arm. Oh. Got it. For, for baiting fish hooks. Exactly. Oh, I thought he meant masturbate. Dad? Clinton. What? You don't know what that is. Shut up. Uh, Grace Rooney. <laughs> as, uh, so, yeah, his, his arm explodes. Um, but from behind the three of you, you hear more moving. Uh, and, uh, more pieces of crystal tree, uh, fly at this thing and builds an even, uh, more deadly looking razor sharp clawed arm. Cool. Is running an option? I mean, it's always an option. Yeah. I see. Uh, it is your Mm -hmm. turn. It is your turn, Magnus. Sometimes Magnus rushes out. (laughs) It would be the first time I've heard of it. Um, although I, I suppose, you know, this this podcast hasn't sort of encapsulated the entirety of your characters' lives. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah, sure. Magnus is four hundred years old. Well, we don't know about that. Taco has a peanut allergy. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't even gotten to that yet. Merle likes long walks in the beach. I don't know. This just it seems 
pointless. There's all this crystal around. What are we really hoping to do here? Got, fellas? Anything? <laughs> hey, you're I mean, on your I own. hit his head really hard with a shattering spell. Yeah, no, and I thought that that went great, but Me then, too. like, he made a, a tree arm or something. I mean, it, I'm into running. <laughs> I didn't... Let me say that in my character voice. I'm into running. Uh, that's fine by me. If you guys want to bolt, let's uh, do it. Yeah, it looks like we are skedaddling. Uh, okay. Oh, I'm not, I don't... Are you okay with that, Magnus? Yeah. Merle? I don't know if you saw. I hit him and did like six damage. That is not something I am used to. Merle, are you good with I, running? I think that this... You're a bunch of honeys. Okay. I think this is the first time we've faced anything that was actually tough, that Uh we weren't assured of beating, Yeah. and you're going to run away. You know that if we all... Way, 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 run away. You know that if we all die, there's no more podcasts, and we don't get the money from the Max Fund donations anymore, right? Run! (laughs) Run away! Run away! Uh, Okay. uh, Griffin, wait, wait, wait. Before we do this... Is this not what we're supposed to do? Because it really felt to me like we were supposed to run away. But it, there's no like to. Th- this is our uh, this is our adventure. Yeah, there's no like. Well, I, I want to win D and D. Yeah, sure. Don't chop up the don't chop up the kimono. Um, <laughs> let, let it go. I ripped open the kimono, whether you like it or not. Uh, okay, we'll we'll say you guys are uh, start moving away from this big crystal golem, um, and we'll use we'll use Magnus's turn as sort of the basis of that group action. Um, and on the start of this Crystal Golem's turn, he watches... Uh, which, where are you running? Um, remind me of the options. Uh, back to where you dropped in, or that white circle of light around the metal hatch. White circle of light, please. Yeah, let's go for it. Are we ever gonna know why he pointed at Merle and said, you? Oh, cause you just have one of those faces, you know, that people see, faces. and they're like, ooh, that guy. Um, mm. the three of you make a break for, for that white hatch, um, and on its turn... <laughs> Wait a minute, can, can we please at least go... Yes, <laughs> I will assume that that is what you... The sound that you create uh, as you did that. And uh, uh, as, you, uh, as you bolt on this Crystal Golem's turn, uh, Della Reese is going to get uh, uh, a, a strike with her heavenly sword on it. Uh, and this thing makes a dexterity saving throw. Well, that's a nine, so I doubt that's going to clear it. No. Um, so, yeah, Della Reese just stabs this thing right through. It's 20 radiant damage. For, for, uh, for Yeah, it, it gets stabbed right through the old chest, um, and it actually takes 40 radiant damage. And you hear it scream through that, that, that crystal beak um, that it intimidated Merle with earlier. You hear it just, like, scream. Um, and the, the light in this thing, uh, kind of pops out of its chest and leaves that crystal golem and the golem just falls to the ground. Um, I knew we could do it. And way to go, Della. And a rift, uh, opens up back in, in, in space and the light flies into it and disappears. I never doubted us for a second. I knew we could win. Della Reese, yeah, I- Della Reese looks at you and says... Looks like someone just got touched by an angel. And she sheathes, she sheathes her sword and disappears. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Wow. That was so an what, excellent what, adventure. What kind of loot do we get? Uh, I mean, there's a bunch of, uh, you know, virulent crystal all, all basically everywhere. Fuck yeah, finally some crystal. This place is probably worth about, uh, like, 20 trillion gold pieces, just like t- in total. Okay. Just like if you take... Uh, I still want to make our way to that to that glowing hatch thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'd like to go check that out too. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, it is a, uh, a a circular hatch with a uh, a gap uh, in between these two semicircle uh, doors, um, and there is a, a uh, there's. Oh wait, huh? Merle, huh? That's why it was you, because you're the holy man, because you have some kind of religious thing, radiant to double damage. That's why he singled you out. Okay. <laughs> Let's remember that. Uh, so yeah, you, you you this hatch has a a, a small panel on the door of it, and it is not crystallized. Um, and you hear actually Lucas uh, come in through the uh, the the pendant that the director gave you before you uh, uh, 
uh, departed from the Bureau of Balance headquarters. You hear Lucas say, uh, 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 first of all, what the hell was that? What just happened? I heard a bunch of like was, crumbling and, and cracking and tink, yeah, crinkle tinkles. Yeah, it was tinkles. awesome. We, uh, there was a crystal monster and we lured him into a trap that we had set. Yeah, we pretended we were running away. We pretended we were running away. And he fell we were, for it. He fell for it, dingus. <laughs> and then we killed it. We killed, well, we, well, we, a trap. So, yeah, we killed it. Yeah, we did. There's 20 yeah, experience yeah, yeah. points. We gave ourselves 25 crisp experience <laughs> <laughs> Well, that shouldn't, there shouldn't be anything here. Anything that was in the, the, the crystallized rooms should have just gotten, just, just should have gotten frozen. I don't understand. Well, you weren't hey, here, hey, were you? You weren't here. Hey, Lucas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mine is here. Um, in your experiments with these crystals, did you uh, ever hear a voice or... Sounds like something was talking to you. Um, no, I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, all right. Us I either. don't believe us you. But no, huh? Cool. No. It didn't happen to us either. Uh-uh. Uh uh. Nope. No. Nope, no. Nope. Okay. Have you made it to the to the exit of the conservatory to the first arcane airlock? Is it the glowing hat? Yeah, that's what it would look like. Yeah, sure. Then yes. Hell yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Just put your hand on the panel, and I'll I'll channel I'll channel enough energy into it, and and let you guys through. Um, and then once you move through that chamber, I'll be able to shut down that airlock and and buy us a, a little bit more energy and a little bit more time. I do that. Okay. Um. Wait. Is this gonna affect how the reclaimers, all their shit, and being able to get in and stuff? I thought we were the screwed? only reclaimers. Uh, are you saying that into the pendant? No, I've got my hand over the pendant. Okay. I'm talking to Merle and um, I face? forgot who they are or what they're doing. And I don't care about them anyway. The regulators, the ones who are like supposed to back us up and like arrest. Yeah, they're doing a great job so far, where, aren't they? Where are they? They got blown away in the gnarly storm. Oh, man. Like the Martian. Love that book. Listen. <laughs> okay. We're done here. Uh, <laughs> That's a good conversation, guys. I think that, that we've already proven that we can't keep really good track of them. <laughs> <laughs> Just from like a narrative human being, like I don't think we can keep tabs on them. They've got really got to fend for themselves because we need the time. You know what? I I can't fault your logic. All right, I uncover the pendant. I put my hand on the thing. Here's what I'm saying: either they okay, die, I recover the pendant. <laughs> either they die or we forget them. Either way, they're not going to probably you both. Or they, yeah, probably both. I uncover the pendant. Oh, thank God! It was getting a little stuffy. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Uh, no, that's not how that works. <laughs> Are you independent? You live with the pendant. He is independent. Oh, that's a good joke. Anyway, just put your hand on the panel on the door, <laughs> and it should open up for you, and and um, you'll 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 be protected um from from the uh from from that crystal thing. You should be uh, the next chamber should be clear as far as I know. Cool, I do that. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, hold on, that Merle, Magnus. No, that's okay. God. Son of a damn it. Could you two not have gotten together on the letters with which your names begin? Should I be Pearl? Mine Maybe. actually is a silent P. So oh, shit, then you're, you're, you're Pearl and Pagnus. <laughs> you guys really are the worst two people. Um, what were you going to say, Taco? Dad was going to say something. I'm just calling him Dad. Okay. He's my dad. Dad, what were you going to say? He was going to say something. Well, I'm in character, okay. so I don't answer. Holy you. shit. Fuck me, you're running. Okay. <laughs> Mergness is going to say something now. I just was wondering if it might be a trap, but nope. we're obviously in a hurry to get through the air. Nope, not a trap. Oh, Eat God. me. We don't know you. <laughs> you're a real, you're a dingbat too. I don't like you at all. But let's go. I say we'll go through. This is getting boring and this is a podcast. Let's go. <laughs> uh, you, you move into the airlock and it is, it's like a, it's like an airlock in a spaceship or a submarine. Um, it's a it's a small chain which we have all been in. Um, no, well, maybe, probably, maybe in the backstory, probably not. Um, it's it's just a little chamber and it has two of these white circular hatches on uh, either side. And as you move into the airlock, it is not crystallized. It is uh, it, it's made of uh, just sort of a white uh, metal. And um, uh, the hatch closes behind you, and you hear a, a, a hissing sound. There's some uh, some, some smoke in the room, and then the chamber's <laughs> full of snakes, and you drown in snakes. <laughs> you drown in snakes. Not again. Uh, no, there's no snakes. <laughs> just a little bit of smoke, and then uh, the smoke clears, and you hear like a bing-bong noise. Maybe I'll put that in in post. Maybe I won't. 
Um, and wait, wait, wait! You said smoke and bong. Cheech and Chong are in there. Yeah, hell yeah! I thought you were doing. And they're covered in snakes. <laughs> Um, and Cheech is a snake and so strong they're both snakes <laughs> it's all snakes it's snakes all the way down uh, soup to nuts snakes 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 man I hope when J.J. Abrams remakes this podcast he <laughs> takes all this stuff out uh, what were you decided to do guys just lose a lot of the snake stuff we know the fans <laughs> love it but we worried that it wouldn't be as approachable the material because uh, it's real heavily laden with snakes I didn't really understand it becomes hard to follow because our J.J. Heroes- Abrams a puppy <laughs> Our heroes become snakes, and uh, they are all married to snakes, and they use snakes as weapons. Hand me some of that macaroni and cheese with snakes on it. lets them do magic. They eat snakes for fuel, and they become snake ro- robots for a while. It's very confusing. So we got rid of most of the snakes. There's still a lot of snakes. But, I mean, it's, it's just a regular amount of snakes for the Adventure Zone, which for any other thing is still a, an enormous amount of snakes. <laughs> So uh And lens flare <laughs> That's the two big things. <laughs> so uh on the other end of this airlock is more snakes. Uh oh, no. on the other end of this airlock it I actually it. Uh, uh I know I said there was a hatch a hatch on the other side. There's actually two hatches. It uh it, it branches off, it's forming sort of a Y junction. Um and, and hanging in between those uh those two hatches is a, uh, a a sign, and it is uh, noting which is in either direction. And you hear Lucas say, "Now you should be at a, a, a branch in the path, um, and and I'll be able to buy us a little bit more time. We're at about oh, we're running real low, guys. We're at about ten minutes before this thing h- hits the water. Um, so whichever one you go in, I'll be able to disable the airlock on the other side, um, and and buy us a, a, a bit more time by giving me more energy to channel uh, to in, in, into the core." Um, so, so pick, pick a side and I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll, after you go through, I'll shut down the other one. What are the two sides? Uh, well, to the left, uh, you see a sign over the hatch that says research material storage chamber. And then on the right, you see a sign that says the magical world of elevators. Really? <laughs> yeah. Good That's what it says. Griffin's really sticking it to the people who say he's not allowed to have elevators in this game. Um, Again, it's the research material storage chamber or the magical world of elevators. Uh, this one's easy. It's elevators. Let's go. Here we go. Yep. Uh, okay. You, you walk forward and, and uh, uh, open up this, uh, this next hatch, and it spins open to a, a beautiful, ornate room. Um, a, 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 a fairly large chamber um, that almost sort of resembles like a, a museum um, with these different exhibits uh, uh, lining both sides of, of this long chamber. Um, and uh, inside of each exhibit in, in little uh, brass and wood display cases, you see different elevators. Um, and you hear Lucas chime in and say, like, oh, you, you made it to the magical world of elevators, huh? Yes. This is, well, this lab has been in my family for a few generations. I, I inherited it from my, from my mom, um, but there was a, a, a codicil in the will um, that required that I keep this museum uh, honoring my grandpa's greatest technological accomplishment intact. He, he invented the elevator. And honestly, like most of the technological uh, advancements in our world, that was all... That was all Grandpa Roman, so um, yeah, I, I couldn't change it. But go go ahead and have a look around. It's I think you you might learn a little bit of something about elevators. Don't we have like shit to do? Uh, is it hard? Is it hard feeling like you're always in his shadow? <laughs> oh, good question. Do you feel like you're in Roman's shadow? I mean, a little bit sometimes. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I'm trying to make yeah, my man. own mark on the world, and frankly, I, sure, I feel sure, like yeah. a lot of and it's, mm-hmm. a lot of his inventions were kind of primitive and. It's, people just aren't as excited about inventions. Like when the first elevator came around, forget about it. But you try and invent a new, yeah. better elevator, and people don't want to hear well, it. Well, it's an up and down business. People say oh that my about, God. Uh, people say that about um, Thomas Edison a lot. Like he invented the light bulb, but right, but like they didn't have them back then, right? So if if I had been around back then, that would have been easy for me because they didn't have light bulbs. They didn't have anything. So like inventing stuff was way easier. 
These days, I'd have to invent like a double light bulb or something to, to even Holy, get that just kind of wait, impact. Pa- hold on for a second. I gotta write that down. Double, double light bulb. You can have that one. That's fine. No, light don't bulb. give it to him. No, money has no object to me. Oh, that's that's patently untrue. That's not in character. I'm just telling you. That's I'm calling a horseshit on that on on behalf of our listening audience. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just no, a no, facade. No. The the fact that money is patently important to Taco is patently untrue. That Paco would say that. Yeah. Is not. <laughs> okay, fair. And I think we've learned a little bit about Lucas today. Yeah, I feel really I think we've all, Let's go home and think about what we've learned. I gotta say, the timing on this episode's a little bit off, because I think we're at the end of it now, and man, it would have been cool if it had ended with D- Della Reese stabbing a crystal monster to death, and not the three of you entering a museum, and then, like, having to talk with some guy about his grandpa. Well, why, why don't you recut that in <laughs> okay. here, Griffin? <laughs> uh, Della Reese shows up and stabs <laughs> through an elevator. And she says, well, I got a taste for it now. <laughs> I just love killing. It hates I, elevators. I'm Della Reese, and I love killing. <laughs> Looks like this elevator just got touched by an angel, right, guys? <laughs> More like a Delevator. This one's going down. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Hi, my name is Justin McElroy. And I'm Dr. Sydney McElroy. We host the medical history podcast Sawbones, a tour of all the weird, stupid, terrible, horrifying, hilarious ways that we've tried to fix people over the years. If you haven't been listening to Sawbones, you've missed out on topics like the Seasick Proof Saloon, the woman who gave birth to bunnies, the unkillable Phineas Gage, the true story of Typhoid Mary. Polio. And you can check out Sawbones every Wednesday by going to iTunes or wherever podcasts are sold. They don't sell podcasts. I told you this. Or presented. <laughs> Offered for free. It's free. What better selling point could there be than that? Every Wednesday, MaximumFun.org or wherever podcasts are offered, it's Sawbones. <laughs>